We merged in 1993 with Congregation Ben Isaacin to form the Congregation Beth Shalom Ben Isaacin Ethiopian Hebrew Congregation, where Rabbi Capers Fene continues to lead us as chief rabbi. So um, I mentioned that, you know, we have 104 years. And through that 104 years, we've been very involved and active in our community. We still stay active doing activism work, working on current campaigns across Chicago. Our members, Sydney, Mike Eldridge, are working real hard to help in homelessness right now. And Sydney is actually uh, running um, for public office at uh, the newly created position of district council. So if you haven't read about these things, and if you live in Chicago, especially if you live in Chicago, uh, please see one of us to get more information because we are trying to do the work that our ancestors started before us. And we do this with an understanding that one of our values is that we are not free to desist from the work. We know the work um, is something that is still going on. The journey for just the justice um, journey continues. Uh, we see it every day. So we appreciate everyone coming out in fellowship because it's through this kind of community building that we touch each other and understand what each other is going through. So enjoy the food. I'm sure you will um, enjoy the fellowship. And please uh, come back out. Um, if you have not attended Beth Shalom before, come back out um, and sojourn with us. Um, we would love to have you. Rabbi is coming up now. They told me he was coming up late. I'm not telling you. I just wanted to say that we also have Rabbi Tamar Manasseh uh, with us today. Uh, Rabbi Manasseh uh, is the president of an organization called MASS, Men and Women, Mothers and Men Against Senseless Killing. She has been on the corner of 75th and Stewart for seven years, for seven years doing the work, and they have really done a great job at reducing crime in her area. So we have been very active in doing these things. Thank you so very much. All right, so uh, I'm not shown is gonna turn on some music for us. So just enjoy each other's company um, and we will be serving shortly. Our message, our goal is generation to generation. And in that, I had to say when I first came here, I learned the most important thing, the most important thing is what the word Son of God means, what it refers to, house of study, house of prayer. Those two things combined is what gives you the strength to become a better human being. Prayer through faith, belief in the creator. The creator asked us to be intelligent because we were created in his image and we were created to be an intelligent being. Intelligence means what? That we have discipline, that we have control, that we show love, compassion, and consideration to our fellow human being. For in doing so, we show our love for the Creator. Well, that's what He asked us to do. And so, my experience here has been with my brothers like Elder Moshe, brothers like Keskiahu, brothers who always challenge me. My rabbi, when I came here, I came with a, with a mindset that was young. Although I may not have been young in age, I thought I had learned and studied. I hadn't learned enough. The one thing I learned, and I'll tell you this, I know less than I know more. But being here gave me the opportunity to challenge my, my thinking, challenge my thoughts, challenge my ideas, challenge what I could do in my life to better myself as a human being, but more so to better my community, better my people, better Israel. When I look at Israel, I see the conditions that we face. And when I look at our community, I see the conditions that our community face. One of the things that I am emphasizing, and I'm emphasizing this because the scriptures teaches us to emphasize this. 
And I say this in a story that you may have heard, and it's about education. It's about continuation. If we don't educate our children, you will lose them. When you lose the children, you lose a generation. When you lose that generation, you will lose your identity of who you are because they will forget and they will no longer teach what the ancestors have given us. And so it is imperative that we stress education in the lives of our children because it's education that is going to help bring us out of the state of the mire of ignorance that we see many of our community fall has fallen to. And we face some serious challenges ahead. The challenges of the generation to come from generation to generation, we will continue and we will grow stronger. And the challenges that these young people will face today are not going to be the same challenges that we face, but at the same time, they are. For all of us, when we talk about, I want to be as righteous as Abraham. I want to be as faithful as our father, Jacob. I want to be as compassionate and loving as Aaron. Why? Because they set an example for us to follow. They weren't perfect, and neither are we. But we strive to bring the best of us out of each other, out of our neighbor, for there's nothing greater than the love of God and the love of our fellow man, love of neighbor. And so our role is Israel. This is what Israel's role is. Our role is to uplift the people, the people of God. But the people of God is not just the people known as Israel. The people of God is every human being that he created on this planet. And what I mean by that is all human beings have a part of God. And we, as God's chosen people, have been given the task and the mission to set forth an example in how humanity and how humans are supposed to relate. That's why we were given the law in which we love. Because that is our strength. And that is what is going to connect all human beings. We're able to see the love of each other and respect of each other. Then will all nations come and gather at the door of Jerusalem and say, my house is a house for all people. For everyone was created by the one God. And we hope that one day humanity will be able to become one in reverence and in witness to God and respect for each human being that we encounter. That's all I have to say that I've learned here at this synagogue. Hallelujah. So we're about ready to um, get going here. We want to make a bracha, thanking the eternal for all that he has provided us with and provided for us and blessed us to obtain and to reach this season. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech olam hamotzi lechem min haaretz amen. Blessed art thou, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. And we say, Bateyabon, hearty appetite. Someone will announce how we're going to be serving. Shalom, everybody. We're going to start with Rabbi's table first because those are some of our more honored guests. Everyone here is a guest. Once we do that, once the rabbi's table has gone up, we want it to be one table at a time so that we're not bumping into each other. So we're going to stay over here and give it a call out. Rabbi's table, if you go ahead and go on up and get your food, and I'll let you know when we can start moving to the other tables. Shalom, shalom. Thank you for your patience. We're going to get this show on the road. Uh, first and foremost, giving all honor, praise, and glory to Adonai Zavot, Master of Legions, who is Adon Alam, the master of the universe, Le Alam Va'ed, for all eternity. Thank you for being here with us this weekend. It has been a blessing. Uh, the children have worked really hard to put this together. It may have seen somewhat last minute, but I have a saying, nothing gets done until the last minute. Um, that's sort of the creed, if you think about 
B'nai Yisrael, because when we came out of Egypt, there was no preparation. That's why the bread never leavened. We, we took off. And when it was time to go into the land, we weren't ready. So it seems that you have to have a little bit more faith in Hashem or in the Most High God in order for things to get done. And it took a lot of faith to get me here this moment and the children as well. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Sister... Are you there? <laughs> Sister Sylvan, thank you very much. Shalom, shalom, everyone. Shalom. My name is Carol Lani Guinier, but my friends call me Dr. Lani. I'm a child of an interracial marriage. My mother, Eugenia Paparin, is a white Jewish immigrant from Poland and, and was a civil rights activist. And she married my black father, Edward Guinier, who was a Harvard professor and the first chairman of the Afro-American Studies Department at Harvard, at Harvard College. I am the author of six books, two of which I'm sure you scholarly Israelites have heard of. The first one is The Tyranny of the Majority, Fundamental Fairness in the Representative Democracy. And the second is Lift Every Voice, Turning a Civil Rights Setback into a New Vision of Social Justice. I am a professor at the Harvard Law School, and I'm also the first woman of color appointed to a tenured professor professorship at the university. I was the specialist, thank you, thank you. I was a special assistant at the Civil Rights Division at the U.S. Department of Justice and am a member of the National Association of the Advancement of Colored People, also known as the NAACP. I am the special assistant counselor of the Legal Defense and the Educational Fund of the NAACP, and I am currently the head of its voting rights project. I, have, I always have and will be a staunch supporter of strengthening minority groups' voting power because as a white journalist from the Washington Post once said about me, she believes only blacks can properly represent blacks. But that is enough about me. I am overjoyed to be here with you all today at the Jubilee Israel Sym Symposium. Being we are celebrating 50 years of black excellence in Judaism, it is only right that we would have three of the premier African Israelite leaders of our community speaking at this event. Our first speaker will be the Honorable Rabbi Arnold J Josiah Ford. Rabbi Ford is a black nationalist and an immigrationist who worked directly with Marcus Garvey, and he was born in Bridgetown, Barbados. He is a son of Edward Ford and Elizabeth Augusta Braithwaite. Rabbi Ford asserts that his father's ancestry could be traced to the Yoruba tribe of Nigeria and his mother's to the Mendi tribe of Sierra Leone. Our second esteemed speaker will be Rabbi Wentworth Arthur Matthew. Chief Rabbi Matthew, along with Rabbi Ford, is a luminary in the Universal Negro Improvement Association, also known as the UNIA, and was born in the British West Indies. He is the son of Joseph Matthew and Francis M. Cornelius. Rabbi Matthew attests that his father was the son of an Ethiopian Jew who married his mother, a Christian from Lagos, Nigeria. Our third venerable speaker is Rabbi Haile Moshe Paris. Rabbi Paris is a towering figure among black Jews around the world and was born in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. His mother, Eudoria Paris, adopted him when she migrated to Ethiopia with Rabbi Arnold Josiah Ford in 1935. When Mussolini, when Mussolini and the fascists invaded Ethiopia during the prelude to World War II, many of the Israelites who were attempting to settle there were forced to return to the United States. On the return voyage in September of 1936, their ship was stopped in Germany by Nazis looking for Jewish passengers. The Nazis did not suspect that the black passengers with the Ethiopian child tightly wrapped in, the, in a Torah scroll were, in fact, Jews. Now that you know a little about our three respectable speakers, I'm pleased to bring out Rabbi Ford to deliver his message to you. Shalom, Sister Mikhail. Where is Rabbi Ford? Shalom. What do they mean he wasn't on the plane that landed an hour ago to O'Hare Airport? I'll be right back. I'm going to make a call and find out where Rabbi Ford is. Come on. Welcome to America. Are you here for business or pleasure? Shalom. Whenever I attend. 
to, to travel, to speak to the people of God. It's always a pleasure to tend to the business of our Lord. Well, that's first. Password, please. Here you go. I'm sure that you'll find everything is in order. It says here you're from Barbados. What business are you attending in America? As I said before, I'm tending to the business of the Lord. I'm on my way to speak at a synagogue. So you're claiming you're Jewish? If it pleases you to use that title, then yes, I am a Jew. But to be clear, I'm one of the children of Israel. My people are B'nai Yisrael, the same people of the Bible speaks as being the children of God. So if you're Jewish, then why are you wearing a Muslim um, turban? I'm not sure what this line of questioning has to do with my entry to this country, but I assure you, this head wrap is of Hebrew origin and is worn by Israelites worldwide. Oh, so you're with that radical black nationalist group we've been warned to watch out for. There is nothing radical about my group. White people are proud of their European descent. Why shouldn't black people be proud of their African heritage? If you say so, none of that matters now. I can't let you enter this country because this passport is fake. How can that be so? You can clearly see that the passport is full of visa stamps from several countries, including Europe. How can you make that claim? Okay, I don't have this time to go back and forth with you. If you, if you are who you say you are, and this passport what you say it is, then I'm sure you'll be fine. But I've been doing this 20 years, and I know a phony passport when I see it. As I told you before, the Lord has sent me to speak to his people. How long is this going to take? The Lord and his people are just going to have to wait to hear from you. This may take several hours and several days. Please don't make me call security to escort you to the holding area. I'm a peaceable man, and I know that the Lord is with me. I shall not fear. Oh, right this way, man of God. All right, I made a few calls and found out that Rabbi Ford's arrival to O'Hare Airport has been delayed. I apologize on his behalf and thank you for your patience. I need a few more minutes to make a few calls and straighten things out with the officials at O'Hare. As you wait, please enjoy this musical selection from our Israelite community. Well, <laughs> I have straightened things out with the officials at the airport, and Rabbi Ford will be arriving shortly. Being he is not here yet, let's bring out our second speaker, Rabbi Matthew. Shalom, Sister Naomi Ruth. Where is Rabbi Matthew? What do they mean he wasn't on the train that just arrived at Chicago Union Station? I apologize again, but unfortunately, Rabbi Matthew hasn't arrived to speak to you yet as well. I'm going to make a few calls and see why he's not on the Amtrak train. Come on. Um, take an identification, please. Shalom, here's my train ticket. What do you need my ID card for? I don't make the rules, I'm just following orders. I just saw you check in with that white lady a moment ago. You didn't ask her for an ID. Well, I was instructed that if I saw any suspicious characters, I need to ask for an ID card. What's so suspicious looking about a black man in a suit carrying a briefcase? Oh, it's that funny hat that you're wearing that looks out of place. You mean my kufi? This is a traditional headpiece worn by Jews and Hebrews everywhere. You ask a white Jew wearing a kufi to, to see his ID if he walked up to, the, to his booth. I don't know. I've never seen a black Jew before, but that's not the point. If you want to get on this train, which is about to leave the station, I need to see your ID card, man. Fine. Here's my New York City ID.
The name on your ticket is different from the name on your ID. Do you care to explain? The name of my ID is my Israelite name. It denotes that I am a free man. The person who bought the ticket didn't know I've recently had my legal government name changed and they bought the ticket under my old slave name. Well, that's very interesting. You might have wanted to stick with your real name because this new name that you decided to make up just so happens to be on the FBI's most wanted list. I'm going to have to alert the authorities and detain you until they arrive. That's absurd. I have to be in Chicago in several hours to speak with my brothers and sisters at a synagogue. You are purposely delaying my debture to meet with them at this out with this outlandish claim. Oh, well, your brothers and sisters are just going to have to wait until trouble. Um, until the FBI speaks with you and clears this issue. I don't want any trouble. Please follow me to the back area where you will have to wait until the federal agents arrive. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not fear. Okay, right this way. We'll see if the Lord shows up for us. No. All right. I just got off the phone with the person who dropped Rabbi Matthew off at the Amtrak train station. He stated he should be here by now. Yet again, I apologize for the delay and thank you for your patience. I'm going to make a call with the Amtrak station real quick to see if the train is running late on a is running on a late schedule. In the meantime, please enjoy this musical selection from our Israelite community. It seems there was some sort of mix-up at the Amtrak station. Don't worry, I have straightened it all out. Rabbi Matthew will be here shortly. Since our first two speakers haven't arrived yet, I'm going to bring out Rabbi Paris, who is driving himself to Chicago, and he is never late. Shalom, Sister Asia. Where is Rabbi Paris? What do they mean his car hasn't arrived in our parking lot yet? I apologize once again, but unfortunately, Rabbi Paris's car hasn't pulled up yet. I've got to make a few calls. I'll be right back. I hope he hasn't run into any car troubles. <laughs> what in the world? Why is there a state trooper pulling me over? I wasn't speeding. License registration, please. Is that a problem, officer? I'm the one who's asking the questions, and I ask for your license and registration. I see. Here you go, officer. Do you know why I pulled you over? No. That's why I tried to figure out when I spoke to you a moment ago. Well, when I ran your plates, a red flag popped up. What are you talking about? My plates are coming, not having any tickets. Where are the stuff about red flags? I told you before, I'm the one in charge here, and I'm the one asking the questions, not you, man. I don't like how this conversation is going. Am I under arrest when my feet to go? I warned you twice. Step out the car and keep your hands where I can see them, and don't try any funny business either. This gun on my hip and a toy. Okay. Let me say, officer, I'm not trying to give you a hard time. I'm just trying to figure out what's going on here. 
I'll tell you what's going on here. Your plates state that the owner of this car has a warrant for their arrest, and the name on their driver's license and registration match the name on the plates. That means you're under the arrest, arrest mister. You need to read your Miranda rights. No, I know them by heart, but I don't know anything about a warrant. I follow the law, and I am a God-fearing man, and I'm not an ordained rabbi, and I don't break the laws of the Lord of those of America. That's all fine and dandy, and I don't care if you're a preacher or a pastor. The warrant says you've been involved in criminal activities related to rioting during protests. I'm taking you into the station. Man, I want to talk to my lawyer. Don't worry, preacher man. We'll give you your phone call once we're done booking you. Now let's go. Yay. Though I walk through the valley of shadow death, I shall feel no evil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard that before. Tell it to the judge. Come on, come on. Go. I just got off the phone with the Highway Patrol Agency, and Rabbi Paris has been released from custody and will be here in a few short moments to join Rabbi Ford and Rabbi Matthew, who are already backstage. All three of the Israelite leaders are, that are to speak to you today at this glorious and momentous occasion, all three of them had a run-in with the law today. It seems the forces that be were trying to keep them from delivering their messages to B'nai Yisrael. But the God of Israel has seen it befitting to deliver these three rabbis from their oppressors, and all three of them will be out shortly to speak with you. Please enjoy this final musical selection from our Israelite community and Rabbi Ford, Rabbi Matthew, and Rabbi Paris. We will be out afterwards. Any further ado, I present to you Rabbi Ford, Rabbi Matthew, and Rabbi and Rabbi Paris. First and foremost, I'd like to apologize for my tardiness. And secondly, I'd like to sincerely thank Dr. Lani for negotiating with the US Immigration Office so that I could even be here to speak to you at this late hour. I don't know what she said to them, but after she spoke with them, they were suddenly very apologetic for their mix up. So much so that they put me on a jet plane to Chicago. Dr. Lani is a shrewd negotiator. And if you don't know, she once was a nominee for the U.S. Assistant Attorney General, William Thaddeus Coleman Jr., who had served as U.S. Secretary of Transportation, once said that the withdrawal of Professor Guineer, her nomination for Assistant Attorney General, was a grave loss, both for President Clinton and for the country. As for the so-called mix-up at the airport, I'm from Bridgetown, Barbados, and I immigrated to Harlem, New York, years ago, so I wasn't even surprised that they tried to pull that stuff with me today. Ever since I joined forces with the Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey and have been active in the UNIA, I knew there was a target painted on my back, front, sides, and head. Before joining the Garvey movement, I served in the British Royal Navy, and I was a minister of public works in the Republic of Liberia, where many ex-slaves and early black nationalists settled. When I arrived in Harlem around 1910, 
I gravitated to its musical centers rather than to political or religious institutions. Although within our black culture, all three are often interrelated. From 1917 to 1935, I was an active member of black Jews within the UNIA who studied Hebrew, religion, and history. And over the years, I helped build a black community with cultural integrity, economic viability, and political virility. During my years of service, I have been one of the most important catalysts for the spread of Judaism among African Americans and through my successors, communities of black Jews emerged and survived in several American cities to this day. So when I say I'm not surprised that they tried to pull that with me at O'Hare Airport today, please know I mean it. But as the Torah states, I must go where Adonai sends me. Deuteronomy 36, 31, 6, be strong and of good courage, fear not, nor be affrighted at them. For Adonai thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Amen. Thank you for being here at Beth Shalom B'nai Zach in Ethiopian Hebrew Con Congregation today at our Israelite Jubilee Symposium. And I'm now going to yield the rest of my time to my, most loyal, to my most loyal prodigy, Rabbi Matthew. As my mentor pre previously stated, I'd like to offer my sincerest apologies for my late arrival. And I'd like to also sincerely thank Dr. Lonnie for putting things in order with director with the director of FBI. Director of FBI. It seems during it seems it seems during her time serving in the Civil Rights Division during the Carter administration, she got to know the director on her on a first name basis. After she spoke with him on the phone today, much to surprise much to the surprise of the federal agents that had me hemmed up at the Amtrak station. He, offer, he ordered them to hand me the phone and spoke to me directly, offering his sincerest apologies for his troubles. After he spoke with me, he ordered the FBI agents to accompany me aboard the Amtrak train that traveled nonstop directly to Chicago so I could be here with you today. Sisters like, sisters like Dr. Lonnie have always been hand, handling things behind the scenes for brothers like me and our black community communities committees and I'm glad I know her on her on on a first name basis just like Rabbi Ford I am I am an African native that immigrated to Harlem New York in the early 1900s and just like him I know how to handle myself especially in a boxing ring when I finally arrived at the Hebrew Union College in Cincinnati I knew it was time for me to put my boxing gloves down and pick up the double-edged sword of Adonai. After studying the Tenach several years, I made the transition from a church-based organization holding Jews' beliefs to a fully functioning synagogue that embraced most of the tenets of mainstream Orthodox Judaism. This ultimately led me to join the Garvey movement where I met my now friend, teacher, Rabbi Ford. With his, mentor, with his mentoring, I rose up in the ranks and much like Moses taught Joshua, Rabbi Ford taught me how to lead the children of Israel when he departed in 1931, when he immigrated to Ethiopia. He sent his blessing, he sent his blessing and a letter granting me full authority to represent us in America. And he also furnished me with a shemach Shmicha, a certificate of rabbinic ordination. Being we are traveled men, Rabbi Ford and I have witnessed countless acts of racism during our, during our time serving B'nai Yisrael. So the mishap that occurred with me today at the Amtrak train station, it should be considered just another stop on train, on, on train that Adonai commanded me to aboard. The Tanakh states in Joshua 1 and 9, have not I commanded thee, be strong of good courage, be not affr affrighted whithersoever thou goest. Amen. Thank you for being, thank you for being at this 50 year celebration. I will now turn this meeting over to the youngest of our group, Rabbi Paris. Okay. 
I'd like to start by saying as much as I regret not being able to arrive on time, I'm terribly upset that I missed out on the Israelite musical performances that were presented before my arrival. All I'm going to say about the debacle with the state trooper is this. After Dr. Bonnie got off the phone with him, he snapped to attention and gave me a three-car escort to the temple. Friends like Dr. Bonnie, who have worked diligently to establish connections for the Black people from the White House to the Highway Patrol Station, folks like her are far and few in between, and I'm glad she's on our side. To that, my sister. It has been a long day, so I'll keep it short and sweet. My life is a bridge that I connected to, that connected with the Ethiopian Jews, with African-American Jews. I spent many of my years tirelessly trying to convince the, the white Jews to accept the authenticity of Jews of African descent. When I was brought to Harlem, New York, as a small child by my mother, Adora Paris, shortly after my arrival, she became active in the Garvey, Garvey's UNIA group and soon became the leader of the Keeper's Ethiopian Hebrew congregation with Chief Rabbi W.A. Matthew. And in 1947, I received my bar mitzvah from Rabbi Yermiahu Yisrael, the founder of B'nai Adat. I can go on and on about the degrees I've received in Jewish studies and how I have served Israelite communities in many meaningful ways. But other than that, I have put a song in my heart and I want to see what these musicians got. So all of you, please assemble so us three rabbis can help raise the name of God of Israel with you. What's my name? Well, I've been changed. With Dan B. Tong, slavery, my only fame, even my soul, the nation's plunder, was my name. What's my name? Who could care? Oh, yeah, for none to stand with me. I alone have to bear my grief and misery will come the day you know you know you know my god is tired way the heathen way the heathen use his name then he'll tear my bonds asunder then you'll hear when i proclaim then you'll hear when i proclaim oh yeah Israel, 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 Israel is our name. Hallelujah. I want to thank everybody connected with this program, but especially I want to thank Rabbi Ford, <laughs> I want to thank Rabbi Matthew, and a special, special thanks to Rabbi Paris, my teacher. <laughs> and I even want to thank the custom officers that showed us, what did you say, uh, Rabbi, Rabbi Paris, what did you say? The, the, you should not, what, how did you say that your last line? When you said we're speaking to the custom agents, wait, wait, wait. What I? <laughs> what do you say? I shall not fear. Yeah. And so all of the beautiful songstress. 
Yeah. <laughs> Thank each and every one of you. Um, what did you do? You play some? You play the instrument. Okay, you play some drum. And it, come on over here, ticket agent. No, this is the, this woman behind every man. There has to be a strong black woman. <laughs> and this was an example of a strong black woman. More power to you. God bless you. God keep you. And you got, you know, she's a, I got to tell you, she's a straight A student in school. I mean, she's good. You watch her. Keep your eyes open for this one. Because she's going to rock the world. Hallelujah. God bless you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Michael Elwood, God bless you. <laughs> Shalom, everyone. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Um, can everyone stand up? All the cast members, please, and the musicians. And can we all give them one last round of applause and take a take a bow, everyone, please. Bow, take a bow. All right, and you go rejoin your families. And I thank you sincerely, everyone. Thank you. All right, you guys are off the hook. Uh, I'm going to let Maury Moshe take us out so he can put a, you know, a period on this uh, weekend. I uh, hope and pray that uh, everyone that has been here this weekend had a wonderful time. And I'll leave you with this last thought. Um, what this historical fiction skit was about is that you have historical people in a fictional, fictional setting. So these are real people. And who knows, maybe these things did or did not happen to them, but I'm sure somewhere, somehow, sometime, something very similar did happen to them. So, And when I met him in the past, I met him in front of uh, Divine's house, and they was trying to get him inside. And he said, uh, he told me, he said, Rabbi, I, 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 I want to deal with some young minds, and I was, I was young then. <laughs> and uh, and West Side all the way, and so uh, he uh, and it, and I heard something. He said they from the West Side. Uh, they're Blackstone Rangers. Well, he didn't know that was a total insult. And I was like, my man, you don't know what you're dealing with. So I would like if you kept your mouth shut, okay? And Rabbi Paris stepped in and he said, look, y'all got a magazine? I said, I mean, it was the newspaper then. And later on, it became History of the Bible and the Black Man. And, uh, and I gave him some papers. And, I, and that's what I do here. I gave, uh, he gave me some literature. The ones who should have had the literature was the ones that wanted him into the house. Okay? And he said, I deal with bodies all the time he said but right now i want to deal with minds mm -hmm. you know and I, that impressed me and i we we corresponded and so when i tell people i said yeah i met the man and i have the utmost respect for, for rabbi Hilu paris and uh and i know he he was sort of like a legend up in uh, new york and we met him and uh, but i told him the only thing i want you to understand that we're not Blackstone Rangers, okay? We are B'nai Yisrael, and we just happen to be some young men who want to see our people revived, resuscitated, all right, and resurrected. And we are here to stand. And when I see this, this man is dead and gone, but we see that this is still carrying on. So I have to give those of us that in, uh, Beth Shalom credit too, because we work to the bone to try to revive our people. And when I see the, especially I see the yellow dame, in case I, you know, know when some of them were born and stuff like that, you had to see them standing up, trying to be what we claim to be. And so we can be uh, glad that they will continue this. So as we always say, there's always room for one more. And so when I see that, I know that there will be some more that will come behind us. And so I, I thank the, uh, the Knesset. Yes. And uh, 
for reviving and trying to keep things going because it's a hard job. One last little caveat though. I stop hiding behind COVID. That was just a test. You fixing to get the, the good run. Now we're going to know in a few years that, that these next four years or five years, we're going to know who's real and who's not. All right. So with the, some things come upon us. I think Abdi used to say something like that. You know, we with you when you stand up for us. But if something overtakes you, you on your own. And so this is what we're fixing to understand is that, hey, you know, we don't have to be ashamed now about what our, our way of life would explain everything to the T. Because the people that are asking you this stuff, they, they, not, they don't represent what they say they represent. Our name is Yisrael. Case closed. Peace and love. Well, everybody, please stand up, for, for, please. But wait, wait. Come on up here, Don Ben Judah. Caleb, it's your birthday too, right? It goes by, right? Come on up here. All right. What? Huh? 25, 26, 27. Come on up here. And we normally have Rabbi Baruch here uh, because he's the 26 as well. But these are our October birthday men. And so if you would help me and join in, we're doing Yom Who Let It. Mayak, Yom Who Let It. Sameyak, 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 Yom Who Let It. Samaya, young, don't spit them too much now. Samaya, young who let it. 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 Samaya. Happy birthday to each and every one of you. We thank God for you. Yeah, awesome.